Hello and welcome to today's episode of If Only It Was Easy. We are joined with Kent Hawkman and former cock hurling star Lachlan McLaughlin. We take a look at Lachlan's journey to joining the cock scene hurling panel and some of the key moments that happened to him once he hit the big time. Lachlan is one of the nicest guys I know who trusts me if we're on the field and the ball is there to be won. He's a different animal completely. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully you'll enjoy the episode. Lock on, thanks for coming on. All the better done, okay. All good, all good. How are you keeping? Not too bad at all. Trying to stay occupied in this lockdown. I don't really have to explain you too much now. Anyone locally or anyone involved in hurling will know exactly who you are. I'm after pulling in a lot of favours now, getting you to come on board. Like, I didn't have to go far to get a top sports star anyway. So thanks for that. Not a bother, not a bother. So tell me, Lucky, as for people that don't know who you are, because hurling, hurling, I would say, and football is your game. So what we'll do is we'll dive straight into it. And I'm going to ask you, where where did it start? Where did you learn your trade to begin with? Yeah, um, I suppose, yeah, Ken Turk, um, would have started out with the juveniles, uh, probably seven, seven years of age, uh, probably pushed on, kicking and screaming to, to the first session. But... Um, yeah, I always kind of had an interest in it, but it was probably the club, the underage uh, in Cantor that, that got me going. And like, did you love it instantly, like, or was it a chore? Was hurling what you wanted to do? Or were you just a young fella that would have played any sport? Um, it's hard, I suppose, looking back, yeah, you, I would have played anything, everything from hurling, football, soccer, or everything, but definitely I, I, rem- I remember my first session having to be pushed down practically in the gate, uh, kicking and screaming to, to go playing, so uh, the, the, the start was a bit of a struggle, but then when you get going, it, it was the enjoyment, I suppose, and I suppose, you know, at that age, you just want to get out and play, play anything and everything, but uh, I think the game itself, hurling, there's something different about it, and there was definitely an appeal to that. And did you notice, like, did you notice early on that you were good at it? Do you know what I mean? Because you are a very natural player. Did you, was it something to work on or was it something that came easy to you? Uh, no, no, just uh, an, an awful lot of work. Um, I wouldn't have said I was the most natural player. Uh, probably something that just work really kind of... Um, kind of helped down through the years you know I, I never thought I was any better than any other player or had any natural ability but I suppose I always felt that I had to work harder than a lot of fellas um, and then it was just the enjoyment I think that went with that so maybe just the, the work the work that went in behind the scenes before training and then just the enjoyment and that, that kind of got me as far as it did I suppose And tell me as a young player do you know it was my dream the dream when you're pucking around at home you always picture yourself in Crow Park playing for Cork was that, were you the same? Was there a dream to play for Cork or did you just want to play Hurley and Cork came about? Uh, yeah, possibly a, a bit of both, I suppose. I would have started out before I had any real ambition of, of playing with Cork or anything. Um, and that just came from, we say, being involved with Cantork and stuff. But probably the 99 Hurling final was probably the first time that, that I suppose Cork kind of came on the radar and you, you kind of say to yourself that when after after watching him win that All-Ireland you, I was thinking you know geez that'd be something great to be part of but before that it was just probably for the enjoyment of playing be it hurling or football or any sport in general And can I ask you uh, this is something I've never actually asked you were you brought in at a young age into the Cork panel did you join the under-14s under-16s uh, minors the whole way up or were you later on like a Seamus Harnady yeah, like, no, I would have been lucky around um, under 14, I think was the first, uh, that it would have been the youngest age group um, that Cork were kind of together, but struggled, struggled to make panels, was dropped off, dropped off under 14, panel, I was injured, I missed out under 15, I, I broke my leg, under 16, just about, I think it came down to the, the last few, I probably just about scraped on the panel on, on the 30 plus panel, so I was there on the day of the competition, but would have been nowhere near playing. Um, I think after that then it was the, the minor was always the one the minor then at that was the real goal um, you know playing before the seniors and it, so that was kind of the goal that I set myself to, to really to really have a good go at that and I ended up playing minor hurling in football then in seven so it kind of took off then from there And you say like that became the goal in 2007 the Cock Minors like were you doing anything different? Did you just get serious like or did you know uh, did something click for you? 
Yeah, um, it's hard to know. I suppose I did. I would have put in an awful lot of work, right? But I, or an awful lot of work behind it, and I, but it just gave me kind of a focus, I suppose, in terms of saying, yeah, do you know what, this is something I want to achieve, and I, I did everything I could then possibly just to, to, to get in there and give myself the best opportunity. So it was just prioritising hurling and, I suppose, a football to an extent as well. And I think I, I probably got an opportunity to play with the footballers and would have made them cop minor football panel before I met the hurling. Um, okay. And and that would have helped, I think, in a way that I, I kind of got in there. And then I, I was going well enough in hurling as well. So I don't know, they, it just kind of took off. And both and I ended up playing championship in both that year in 07. And I, I'd gone from never really playing anything with Cork before that. So it's funny how it kind of plays out. Did you notice anything different in your the way you played the game? You know, Did you just start, get a bit older, a bit more mature, and games started to go better for you? Performances have to improve? Or uh, did all this I, just happen without you even noticing, really? Uh, I think belief, I suppose there was a bit of belief and there was a bit of, um, I suppose, motivation to, to get better and to improve. And uh, I suppose every year I kind of made, you could see a bit of improvement. And, you know, like you'd know in your performances anyway, if you're, if you're kind of going well or not. And I, I just felt that year that I had been going well enough that I'd been fortunate enough. I hadn't, I hadn't too many injuries at that age group. And I was just playing an awful lot of hurling and football between probably class to trust at the time who had, a good run in the schools and then just being involved with divisional teams with Tuhalo, hurling and football with Cantork. Um, there was just an awful lot of games going on and I, I, I just had a good run at it and I suppose I'd been playing playing okay at the time and that would have kind of put me in a good position and then when trials came up I was in a good position to perform at those trials and then it kind of it just more or less took off then. Oh very good. Can I ask you did you did you notice a massive difference when you were going from club playing with your friends to trials and playing with Cork because no I've never played into county but I have trifled with trials and I've trifled with college teams and I noticed that the jump was it was very daunting because you know you are you're playing with players on the same team but you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't necessarily say your buddies because you're both driven individually do you know what I mean so if you're at a trial game and you're playing beside your corner forward when you're at your club you're going to help out your corner forward but you know when you're trying to get on to the top level and i say it's every sport it's almost yeah. survival of the fittest like did you actually relish that or did you did you find it hard to cope with or did you not even did not even notice it yeah, no, no, that's interesting because it is, look, I suppose it is a trial and they're judging fellas individually and, you know, and they always look, they've always said that it's not always about the fellow that gets the scores, it's the fellow that makes the scores. So. I don't know do I believe that though, to be honest, but we'll say nothing. <laughs> I know. Look, it is. You might. You see, it, it's tough that they, you get an opportunity at a trial unless you're kind of. You would have had, would we'll say, some of the top club players at that time. They would have been, would we'll say, playing Premier, and they would have been seen a number of times. So they had an idea of the majority of fellas that were out there. But if you were coming from, would we'll say, clubs at a lesser standard or less playing in lesser grades, you might be seen as much. So you kind of have one shot at a trial, and unless you do something that's you know that really stands out. It's I unlikely, suppose, yeah. Yeah, there, there, I suppose there's so many clubs and so many players in Cork that a, 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 an ordinary hurler there a dime a dozen, whereas, or a footballer, whereas if you get one shot at a trial, you have to do something exceptional just to even get on their radar. But they probably have an idea of the majority of players that are out there. Um, so it's only, they probably those trials are only going to pick up a handful more of players. I was when getting onto this Cork panel and dealing with the top standard of players i presume it was probably ruthless you know because you're all trying to get on the same team did you find that you had to change your game or did you find that you have to you have to toughen up or did you feel that you had to improve to reach that standard or yeah, did it come kind of naturally the, there was always kind of the, the thought that maybe i had to be better than a lot of these fellas because of maybe the club or the you know can talk would have been playing at lower grade so we wouldn't have been playing at the, against the best in the in the in the county um i suppose that minor i was the only one from new hollow at that grade as well so that i suppose that didn't help either but um no it, look I, I i enjoyed it to be honest every every there was an awful lot of talented players there at, at um 2007 at minor um so i actually just relished it and even i think i made the panel as a corner forward for some reason even those trials I, they, they were playing me a corner forward and as the year went on I progressed back to wing back which they kind of I think they got a bit of sense that maybe <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. 
I wasn't the most natural kind of player. But I actually, I, I didn't mind it and I didn't complain. It's where they played me, so I just kind of got on with it. And I, I, I actually did well enough in trials and kind of surprised. But um, then, yeah, they, uh, I suppose, yeah, as, as the campaign went on, then I probably moved back into a more natural position as midfield and then ended up as a wing back. Very good, very good. Um, that minor hurling team turned out to be very successful. You went far, you went the whole way, really. You went to the All Ireland final. Was that your first run out in Crow Park? Would it have been at that stage? Um, you played there previously. Yeah, up to that year would have been yes. But I, I was involved with the. We would have played an All Ireland quarter final there against Galway before one of the senior games earlier that year. Okay. We played a game there actually with Derry beat the Cork minor footballers I think that was a quarter final as well that was in Crow Park that year and then the All-Ireland final so we, we'd actually three run, run outs in um, Crow Park that year but uh, yeah my, we we it, we got the Munster final and All-Ireland final but Tip, Tip had just a phenomenal team that time you know they, they did all the matters Noel McGrath um, Michael Cahill yeah exceptional Matt. players that are still there yeah, yeah I understand yeah, and how did you find uh, your experience first run out in Crow Park was it hard? Uh, Did you find it daunting? Not so much daunting, no, but it, it is. I suppose it's surreal to be running out there for the first time. And um, I think it was a quarter final. Uh, we played Galway and it was practically empty. So it's, an, it's a near east sp- uh, place when it's practically empty, but then when it fills up, there's, there's a fierce atmosphere. So it's great. Like it is, it is brilliant to get that opportunity to run out. Yeah, it's a valuable experience. I, I assume that helped you later on, though. Is it the more times you play there, the more comfortable you get? Sure, I yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I think so. You know, and they they say about Kilkenny teams, they're just I suppose they, they don't take any notice of it because they play there so often. But it is a change. Look, it is a phenomenal stadium. It's a different pitch. It's a different. You know, everything is top class. Everything from the, the dressing rooms right until you run out into the pitch. Everything is it's just a different level. Like you know, so it, it, I, I suppose it does take a bit of time to adjust. And the more times you play there, then I suppose the more used to you get. Oh, very good. Moving on to under twenty one, you were on both panels as well. Like, was that after you had you were very successful actually with the footballers? I see you won it the All Ireland final. You came on as a sub near the end of the game against Down, mm-hmm. and you were involved in the hurling. Then, did you have a was that a difficult decision to make? Were you were both senior panels interested in you, or was you just going hurling and that was it? If you had the opportunity, uh, yeah, no, I always I suppose I, I would have put an awful lot more work into. Um, hurling, I suppose that was just my, my first choice and what I was really interested in. Uh, the football, I suppose, look, we, we, we were playing an awful lot of football at the time from, I suppose, like we can talk, had a good run in the 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I suppose you divisional sides as well. I suppose you do a lot of invitation. I, I, it was just at that time I was playing an awful lot of football that would have helped me, but um, I would have probably practiced an awful lot more hurling as well. And it, look, it's just trials, and I suppose when getting the opportunity in trials and, and just trying to perform, and fortunate enough that they probably just saw something enough in me, or I was probably you know doing enough to 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 make those panels and make those teams. And what year did you come into the? Or, or the senior hurling panel, do you mind me asking? Yeah, that was, that was 2010, so Dennis Walsh was involved in the setup then. That was his first year. It was kind of on the back of an awful lot of trouble, I suppose, around the strike. That was kind of true. The, the strike had passed. Dennis Walsh had come in, taken over as manager. I'm not sure. I think he was there in nine. And then would say, I don't know, it was 10, his second year. So that would have been my first year involved then would have been um, in 2010. And how did you cope? With moving on to the big boys, say that's the dream of playing at the senior hurling. Did you like what was your first thoughts joining the panel? Yeah, I suppose they, they, there was probably an awful lot of pressure on Dennis and that particular setup um, after coming through the strikes. I think they went a bit over, like they, they really tried to put a professional setup in place. So it was actually, it, they kind of took it to an extreme in terms of, we'd say, testing and all this, like in trying to, we'd say they were doing. Uh, body weight testing before training they were doing like the GPS or the you know the heart rate monitors and all I this kind of stuff yeah. that would have been new though would it yeah it would have been very new back in 2010 and um, there was probably there was a huge focus on that and I suppose they had to be seen to be kind of progressing things so maybe there was an awful lot of pressure on that on that management team but um, in terms of being involved in any senior setup, it was brilliant and the fact that you still the high profile players like um, the O'Connors you know Sean O'Donnell Cusick yeah. this had an awful lot of phenomenally good players from the last decade 
And was that, like, that experience, like, was that surreal, say, because you have your training games and your high ball has come in and you realise you're only out, you're tackling Sean Oak here. Do you actually think about that? Do you know, a fellow you watched in 99? Do you think about that or are you just worried about, do you know? Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's funny, yeah, I suppose. Um, I even I can, I can remember my last training session before my first league game against Offaly. I played as a wing forward, and I was marking Sean Og as a wing back, so I, was, I would have been 20, I think, at the time. But there is, that does pass your mind to say, geez, you know, and Mark and probably one of the best players that to have played with Cork, you know. But then when you kind of get into it, it's like everything, it's like big games, the minute that ball is thrown in, then you just get on, you play the game, and it, it just is what it is. You don't, but you don't really think about that kind of stuff. And in relation to club hurling and intercounty, now, do you know? I remember when I came on the Kent Torp panel at seventeen. You know, it's very like all the senior players are welcoming, and they try and bring you on. But in relation to coming on as a new player into intercounty, say as a new young fella, new on the scene, are you kind of welcomed, or is it survival of the fittest? You either sink or swim. Or are you given that time to find yeah. your feet? Do you mind me asking? Uh, it's, a, it's it's a bit of everything, I suppose it is. They are look to set up. They're very welcoming, from my experience, management team and everything. Like and they will like I think you're there because they see something in you. You will get an opportunity, but again, you have to you have to be showing to be progressing. You have to both bide your time, and when you get your chance, then you have to take your chance. Um, but it is look the you can get complacent or you, you just have to keep working at it um, and even probably even work a bit harder than you have done to try and impress and get your opportunity because it does pass. It, it, like, you, you do need a shot and when you do get a shot, you have to show something because there are so many players out there like that they'll, you just get turned over and a year will pass and you don't make an impact. Then you, if a second year goes and you're not really playing, it, you tend they tend to move on like they tend to go with other players and give them a shot. So it is dog eat dog. I would say they're very welcoming, but you you still have to you still have to make progress while you're in there. And like when you first signed up, did you feel like if you know a fish out of water, or did, were you comfortable with the standard? Like, do you know? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I just I suppose. You didn't think about it. It was just another day, or just another game, kind of like. Yeah, I suppose it happens. It kind of happens so fast that you're in there, and it's so full on that you, you just go with it. Like, and I, um, I never felt like I was struggling, but I was always hopeful that I would get an opportunity. And um, I play. I, I'm trying to think back. I played a small bit in 2010. And eleven, I wouldn't have played a huge amount. So you're still trying to, you're still trying to impress. But like I suppose, while there was that cohort of the more experienced fellas, it was going to be very hard to get in. There it was until that transition happened, maybe in eleven and twelve, where fellas retired and moved on. That's when the opportunity kind of came, and it, it, it was as much about timing as as anything really for me getting in there. I suppose in around two thousand and twelve, because. Tom and Jerry, who had been midfielders for a decade and were probably the best midfield pairing probably Cork have ever had, had had kind of moved on or were coming to the end of their career. Tom had kind of moved back to wing back as well. That you know, two positions opened up at midfield, and I suppose I was given a shot, and I uh, I probably took it to an extent as well. You know. Yeah, and do you make that? Sorry, do you, are you you're seeing this? And do you make that decision in your head? Do you say like, right, the time is now, got to make a go of it here, or are you just kind of like? Are you just focused on performing this training and just hope you get the decision or do you actively go chasing this? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think early on it's it's very few players that kind of burst onto the scene so I kind of understood that look it takes time and um, sometimes if you're not playing it can get it can get a bit frustrating or you're kind of anxious to kind of get a shot but um, uh, again I, I would say timing I would say if I came through probably a decade earlier I probably would I would have played little if any championship games with the midfield partnership that was there you know so the timing had a big part of it The that transition as well it, it, uh, an opportunity just opened up so it's it's as much about timing as ever, anything but then when I suppose when the chance comes you have to show something as well and let me ask you, when the chance did come and you got your, the team was read out and you were named starting championship, like what are the what are the emotions like, straight? Yeah, yeah, it, I suppose it's exciting. It is, it is, it is. Um, I think one of the first games I played was against Limerick. I think I started in championship. I actually came on for the last few minutes against Tipperary in two thousand and ten. 
Um, I think Cork beat them well. No tip went on to win the All Ireland, but that I suppose when you're coming on, it kind of exposes you to that atmosphere and the intensity and all that. But my first real start would have been against Limerick. Uh, I can't remember if it was 11 or 12, but it was Limerick's kind of strike team. I think and they put out their second team because there was some trouble there. Um, and it was that was that was great experience that it wasn't, we'll say, probably not the best of the best from Limerick, but yeah, it was yeah. still a, a championship day and the build-up was the same and it was still an important game that we had to win that it was knockout. So, you know, in a way, it was kind of a stepping stone onto the senior, senior setup and then... Let's say twelve, I would have played a good bit, and then thirteen, obviously, then from then on. So, uh, and in the the those st- first couple of matches, like, did you find it hard to stay focused? Because you've all, we've all been to championship games, and it's a massive day. You know, it's a massive day out. But as a player, did you find it hard not to get lost in, say, uh, the yeah. the show of it all? Is that what the word I'd use? Because you know, yeah. there's massive crowds building outside. You're on the bus. You're brought in. Is yeah. it hard to realise that you're guilt, you're actually guilt playing this game? Uh, yeah, I suppose it is, and it, it's exciting too because I suppose you know getting the bus into Parky Creeve or Turles or Crow Park and the massive crowds that are there, it, it's brilliant and it's all part of it. But like I say that again, when when you get out and the ball is thrown in, you're only focused on playing the game and trying to do trying to make an impact and do the best you can. Um, I suppose it does. It's still a bit surreal, you know, even even if you're at it for. 10 years the, the excitement is still there rolling up in the bus you know and the, the crowds are outside and you know the atmosphere is building and you go through the, the nerves are there then so it is it's it, you, you it's, it's kind of hard to take it all all in but you kind of just get used to it i suppose as you get older and, yeah um, experience i would assume is everything yeah, you I'm kind of get to- comfortable in that in situation yeah 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 it's, it's a mix of everything um but you just look when when you get out the pitch, then it kind of you just play the game, whether there's ten people or or you know eighty thousand. It's still just a game that has to be played, and you just have to do do whatever you can, do your best. And can I ask you about when the intercounty you would finish and you'd come back to club hurling or playing with CIT or do hello after establishing after establishing yourself as an intercounty player? Did you find that there was more pressure coming back playing? Club hurling, you're actually seen as an intercounty player. So, th- is there an expectation on you to perform? Mm, not necessarily. No, I'd, I'd say you still have to. You still have to perform. Um, it's it's. A, I suppose it's a team game, and you still rely on the players around you as much as your own performance to to kind of do well. So, um, I no, I wouldn't say there was any more pressure, any less pressure. But there's always kind of. The pressure, I suppose, to do well and to try and perform and to try and prepare right. I suppose the biggest change was um, the time. You know, when you're involved in the county thing, you don't realise it, but it's full on. It's it's intense from whenever you start that training, November, December. It's full on right through. When I came back to the club scene, there was just nothing for so long. You know, and then I suppose uh, I, I actually went travelling that summer, but that was the hardest thing actually not knowing when there was championship or those big long gaps so it's I think the way it worked last year was great with the split season you knew oh, exactly what yeah, yeah. Good. I thought it was but great I, as well to be honest as yeah. a spectator I thought that was torture you know, to try and um, you know to try and keep going or try and stay focused or try and stay motivated when there was nothing for a long time I know there was league games but when there was no set date for championship it's very hard to, to have a focus and take uh, club hurling now for example like me and you, you we played with Ken Turk, but you know how you're seen as a far superior player. So you're going out and you notice that there's one player on you, two player on you, three player on you, nearly it all, all the time. Did you find that frustrating? Did you take any notice? Are you just trying to stay focused on your own game? Do you know? Uh, yeah, no, I, don't, I, I actually didn't. <laughs> I didn't think I came in for any any treatment anyway. I just went out and played. I, I look, I was fortunate enough the last few years. Ken Turk had very good players, so you couldn't just go out and mark any one individual so um, I just d- d- try to make an impact like you know like any game sometimes the game can bypass you so you rely on other fellas to to do like to bring you into it or, or you try and bring them into it so I didn't I actually didn't think I, I ever came in for any extra treatment at club level um, more so just that the players I suppose everyone I think a lot better players would have come through as time went on and we, we would have been more successful but we'd have had better teams as well I think Okay and do you find it did you find it frustrating coming on the club level 
because I'm looking at myself included, like, you know, I you're playing can you're playing with Ken Turk and you have me in corner forward and you're playing with Cork and you've Patrick Horgan in corner forward. Like, uh, did you find it hard to almost slow the game down for the likes of us now? Or did you just take any notice? Or are you just uh, as yourself focused on your own game? Uh, oh, I think when Ken Turk win Ken Turk win myself. Probably our best year, 17 and 18, I think everyone is at the same level. I think with the years we haven't done so well, I think collectively we just haven't been at the level we should have been at. So it's more of a, a, a team thing than an individual thing. I never, I, 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 you know, especially in recent years, I felt every fella involved in Cantork has been at an exceptional level for a club level. So there's huge t- potential there and there's huge talent there. But I always felt like playing... You know that that, that the, the quality of players that, that's coming through is is improving all the time. So I never know. I never thought the standard had to be dropped, or it, it didn't feel like it was dropping. Okay, but one thing I would say, and this this is to compliment you, probably <laughs> Nash and Aiden as well, is when I came onto the panel at seventeen, the Kentor panel. You know, there was a good group of us. I think there was like seven of us. You know, came onto the panel, so that was unusual. And I noticed like we we basically won everything. That we were involved in. So you came on confident. Do you know, I think you're the cock at walk. But I remember we were playing a, um, ch- we were playing a training game. And ball was hitting into the corner. And I was running after it. And I turn around and I see you running after me. And I, to be honest with you, to this day, I still don't know what happened. Uh, next, But you, you came up with the ball anyway, fairly handy. And I thought to myself, Jesus, I've, I've, a, I've a long way to go here. This is welcome to the big boys. So what I would say, and in compliment for, and I know the lads would back me up on this, is that yourself and the best thing to happen, Ken Turk, in my opinion, was you and Anthony and Aidan getting onto the cock set up because he actually learned the standard that was needed and he helped bring it back because it was very, it was very hard, say, for us because you, Aidan, Nash, Darren Brown were playing at a certain standard. We felt that we had to raise our game. Do you know what I mean? Yourself, especially in the hurling relation, in the hurling aspect of it, brought that standard to the team. Would you think that? No, oh, I think, look, uh, even a fellow like Anthony, I suppose, he, he's a prime example, like that he came, I suppose, he set a standard and and maintained that standard. Like he played club hurling for 20 years with Kent Park, like, and really set a standard high and maintained that. So I, I, I can only speak for myself that. You know, you'd have to respect a fella like that who who is that driven and who is that focused, and that's why the club. I think that's part of why the club has done so well hurling and football over the last few years because you probably have someone that you can, you know, look at and see how how he prepares, and you can almost see why he's been so successful. Like so, I think he he would have put a template like that and showed fellas how to be successful and how to prepare right, and you know, he he always had that belief as well but he his belief came from his preparation yes 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 i i well that's i i think so too i think so too i thought you were it was the best thing to happen to club definitely but anyway moving on i'll move on to the famous 2013 season and what i want to talk about is the all ireland semi-final would it be yeah. a, would you say arguably your best performance in the cock jersey uh yeah yeah i didn't <laughs> i didn't have too many of them i suppose but they were, that was too, a- you had you had plenty no fairness uh, yeah, that was one of the better days, I suppose, okay, and all Ireland semi final. And I, I think the motivation going into that game was that, you know, Cork hadn't contested an all Ireland final uh, since, I'd say, 2006. So, like, it was a long time. And I just want, I felt we were never going to get a better chance to, to contest an all Ireland final than to, to beat Dublin. Like, um, so that, that was definitely one that, that, that I suppose I wanted just to do my best. And even that if we didn't win the game, that I, I probably had done. You know, I, I wanted to go out and do my best. And that was, I suppose that was just the, mind, the mindset. And waking up that morning, was there anything different? Like, did you just know I'm on it today? Or was it when the ball's thrown in and things start to go well? Do the, does the confidence rise then? Or do you know even before the game, the game starts? Do you know, I'm focused here. Things things are uh, going to go my way today. Yeah, no, it's just funny what, what, what you'd kind of think of on those days. But we, we would have played Dublin in the minor All-Ireland semi-final. And I think we beat them by a point. So it's funny how when you beat a team, that kind of comes back. Then it gives you confidence. And I, I just felt good going against Dublin. I felt that we were good enough to beat Dublin. I, I'd never lost to Dublin. So you kind of all those things help as well. 
Um, just everything everything about the day. Look, it was an All-Ireland semi-final. It was a great opportunity to play in the final. The day was good. Um, I had been injury-free. I, I, I had dislocated my shoulder early that year and missed the first round of the championship. But I had a lot of rehab and stuff done as well. So I just felt good on that day. Very good. And leading into the All-Ireland final then, in your first day out, did you feel... Because you played so well in the semi-final, did you take extra pressure with you into that game? Because it's your first All Ireland final, it's probably, you know, it's yeah. a different game already. But how you had played so well the day before, did you take expert, or did you have more expectations on yourself, or did you uh, not try and think about it? Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Look, it was the the, the first day the draw All Ireland final was probably one of my poor days. I I just wasn't in the game, and um, though obviously. I think Clare were Clare were probably better opposition as well. No respect, no disrespect. To Dublin had a fantastic team as well, but Clare, I suppose, had their homework done and they played probably they played with a sweeper as well, which was just a different, I suppose, a different opposition and a different style of play and um, probably a game that I struggled to get into. So it's tough, like in all our final games, can't pass you by. And I think that day, even I was taken off maybe ten minutes into the second half. Um, but the game probably could have been won, and that was, I suppose, that was the biggest disappointment that the game, you know, even the score patch carbon got at the end. That was just a phenomenal score at that stage yes, of the game. Yeah. But just the bit of, we were fortunate how we played out at the end with the score at the end. But look, was, you know, we, we probably would have taken a replay as well at, on, on the, at the same time. Individually, is there relief that they're going to replay? Do you know that? It's your Nara and final, you get another chance. Because I, I know things didn't go your way the yeah. first day out. But going home, yeah. are you kind of happy to say, all right, t- yeah. yes, I'll get another crack at this anyway? Yeah, 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 that was it. That, that was exactly it. I think an awful lot of um, the feeling around the, the players and Cork supporters was that it was an opportunity missed. But definitely that was actually, that was funny, you know, uh, I would have thought that, 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 yeah, that that was an opportunity you now to kind of redeem myself probably individually that there's a, a second day that like, I suppose, had that second day not come, it would have been hugely disappointed playing in the final and not really perform or not really make an impact. So, um, yeah, the, in a strange way, that was kind of the... Because uh, I, can, I can only kind of relate in relation to our Munster final. Like, like I had a very bad performance that day. I was taken off at half time. That game went to extra time. And I'd say I was, if I was being honest, I was probably the only player that was happy because I was like, all right. If we had won at full time, do you know, although it would have been amazing, do you know, you're you're still looking individually at your own performance, you know what I mean? And I don't know what I've had much. It's hard to say, you know, you weren't that middle when when you don't feel like you've added to the team, you know what I mean? So I was just wondering, was that emotion similar? Yeah, no. That was exactly it. Um, so you're kind of the first thing. Like obviously you want to win the game, and that's that's the key thing. But you'll always analyze your own performance and your own your own game, and it's just like naturally. I think that's the natural thing that if you want to play well, like you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Don't you want to play well, and when things don't go your way, it's very hard to say. Do you know, it's very hard to take pride in that win yeah. or whatever when you didn't really help. Do you know? No, not saying that I my performance was far worse than your performance against clear. Let's not let's not uh let's not say that we're equal here. Do you know? Uh, you know, look I would agree that yeah, any day that you go and you underperform for whatever reason it's disappointing. So to get a replay or to even go to extra time you kinda of get that you get that second shot which which um you know, it rarely happens, I suppose. Yes, I understand. Next thing I went to the approach you about and talk to you was yeah, uh, your injury. I remember you first dislocated your shoulder, and I'd say this was the start of it. Was it again? It was in Castletown Roach, wasn't yeah. it? A club champ- we were playing Castle Lions, mm-hmm. and in fairness to you, I remember sure there was a new there was news articles and everything. Lachlan McLaughlin is injured, dislocated his shoulder in the club game. But in fairness to you, you did massive, massive rehab. Were you like your rehab you did that time was crazy? Were you in the gym yeah. twice a day, every day, trying to get? trying to get it ready and in fairness to you you did get back but I noticed coming towards the end of your career it started to recur like yeah. looking back at that would you have are you happy with the way you handle it or would you have probably sacrificed a year and yeah. done the surgery and tried to get back because I know you do you see it's very hard to look past the here and now you know what I mean but yeah. maybe I've worded that question wrong but I think you're trying to you understand yeah. what I'm getting to uh, 
a hundred percent. Yeah. So, like I suppose that that injury was probably ongoing since the first time I did it in two thousand and thirteen. I missed the first round of the championship against Clare that year. That was two thousand thirteen, right through to uh, two thousand and eighteen. Um, I think yeah, at the end of two thousand and eighteen, I got the. I actually had. I had two operations on it, so I won back in 2015. I had keyhole surgery, and then the end of 2018, I got a pin properly. So for for five years straight, I was probably having trouble with it. Um, no, I, I rehabbed after 2013 for two years straight, and I I, I like I, I I was rehabbing two three times a day, 100 percent consistent with it, no issue, and then dislocated like you were saying in the Castle Lions game. Uh, so I had to get it. An operation. No, that's the only regret was that that time. I don't regret not getting it done straight away, but I regret the first operation being keyhole. If I was to go back, I would have just got it pinned straight away, and there would have been no messing. Then would say for the next couple of years. <clears throat> so that was uh, that was that probably annoyed me a small bit about how it was um, handled. I suppose. No, I understand. I understand. But like, do you see, champ? As, as I say to people, like championship is championship. You know. And if you're mm-hmm. if championships on and you're injured, you know you're not injured. So yeah. like hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. But it's just something that I can kind of relate to because I had a similar injury myself. And I was just wondering if you had your time back, would you have yeah. gone about it differently? But in your preparations for games, like had you any routine or superstitions? What I why I want to ask this question is the night before our learning final, we can talk. We were walking around the stadium and I was talking to, I think it was Ellen O'Keefe. And I said, geez, this place is massive. And I turned around to you and I said, Lockie, how did you play? This one was full. And all you did was close your eyes and shake your head. So I'd like you to, I'd like you to verbalize that, you know. How did you actually prepare leading into these big games, full stadiums, both on the telly and massive crowds? Yeah, yeah, I suppose not not trying to think about it too much. You just... I suppose just but it's impossible uh, not to think about it surely like yeah 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 but I suppose just to appreciate that you know the opportunity that's there was the big thing like that it was you know can't work playing in a club all the final and grow back that was like that was just uh, it's just you realise that uh, that it's a huge mo- a huge opportunity and a huge moment but then you just need to focus that that opportunity will come and come and go and will pass very quickly so it's just about trying to make the most of it so that's I suppose having been there in 13 and realised like you know you did, I think everyone has those thoughts like that geez this is unbelievable this is you know to be playing Pro Park and an all and final but I, I think 13 would have helped I think in a way that yeah it is brilliant but you still need to be ready you still need to to get the job done like so even though all those you can, you can get carried away and all that I think that would have helped just to to focus to keep focused on what need what needed to be done when you play the game, like when you get out on the pitch and you actually put, have to put in a performance and do what you're supposed to do to, to kind of get get a result. Yeah, one person I think it was Mark Ellis said this. I heard him talking about playing in All Ireland or playing in Crow Park with this full. He said it's actually the most enjoyable because you can't hear anything; you can only hear the crowd roaring. Do you know? <laughs> Would you, is that true? Or is he only talking? Yeah, no, it's funny because I remember talking to someone in the All-Ireland Final the first day and I remember running out to the sideline to, for, for a ball that had ran out and some fella from the stand roared in. He was like, come on, duck, duck McLaughlin, wake up. And it's funny, it's actually right. If you're out in the middle of the pitch, it's very hard to hear anything because everyone's roaring. But if you actually go right out to the sideline, you can actually nearly hear the people in the front row. So it's, yeah, it's interesting that, yeah, you don't really, you just, it's just, huge noise like it's just a volume of noise but you can't really hear anything maybe the few messages that come in from the sideline or the people that are around you out the pitch that's all you can really hear so you just like like i'm saying you just focus on what you need to do and, and try to make an impact and in relation because you're after leading me into a topic i'd like to talk about is dealing with you know as a team you know and i won't ask you about your strategies but you come together before a game and you stick with your game plan and, you know, you go out and you try and implement that into the match, right? But then you hear, you see the Cox supporters are very verbal. So mm-hmm. if you're doing something that you'd focused on and worked on in training and it doesn't work out and you're getting slaughtered from the, sta- the stand or the sideline, did you find it hard to stay in the game, to stay focused and to stick with the plan? Or did you take, like, or did you find it stressful? You know what I mean? Because you're implementing yeah. a plan and you're getting yeah. hockey from the sideline. National would be a good man to ask about this because 
I see he gets a lot of verbal from the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see with his pockets, like, sure. I suppose, like everything, if if it's working, you're great. And if it's not working, you're you're the worst in the world. But yeah, no, look, you to a certain extent, I think for any team, you have to be the, the basics are being as fit as you can be and being as sharp as you can be. Then you can play small, like you can whatever have certain styles of play, whether it's puck outs or you know positional moves or how how you want your half hour to play or your inside line. You, you still need your 15 to be at their best and perform at their best on the day of championship. And without that, everything else is just, you know, a sideshow. It's it, when you get that right, those small things will help you get over the line. There'll be that extra 5 10% that will give you an advantage. But um, you, you need your players playing at their best. I know what you're saying then. If, if certain things, if puck outs aren't coming off, then... then the crowd kind of, I suppose, uh, focus on that or they, they're negative towards that. But I think if a, a puck out, it's the responsibility of the players out the field as it is, oh, as I much agree, as the yeah. goalie. So it's very easy for someone from the stand to say, oh, and Anthony, puck out the ball longer, what are you doing? Whereas the fellow out the field has to be ready and has to be sharp enough and make himself available for a puck out. So it works both ways. But I think when we were going well, everyone was on the same wavelength. So everything we practiced in training, we'd done a thousand times over and it made it a lot more, lot easier to, to implement that in, uh, in a game and then it was kind of irrelevant what the, the crowd said or the, the, how they reacted if a mistake was made fellas were going to stick with it because it's number one it was what was practiced about a thousand times over and number two players believed in that they understood that yes there are going to be mistakes it is going to break down but we're still going to stick with it you know yes I understand but that, that's do you know because you'd, I'd be in the stadium you're out in the field and you see, everybody's an expert. So yeah. I was just wondering, as a player, do you know, like, how do you block that out? That's all. I was kind of coming across. Yeah. So it, it probably, I would assume it's overwhelming. You know what I mean? Because if you if you practice something in training and it mm-hmm. but it, and it works, but you go to the match and it doesn't work and you're getting hockeyed from the sideline, you know, is it hard to stay focused or is it yeah. hard to stay confident, you know? No, no, I think, no, you... you I think the team, like if if it needs to be changed, it is changed. But there's, um, like, it doesn't make sense to practice something for months on end and practice a thousand times over. And then if it if it doesn't work, you know, there's obviously a reason for doing it that way. That there I there's some that, yeah. event for being a puck out or a style of play. And if it doesn't work for the first five or ten minutes, it does make sense to change it after practicing for four or five months straight and then it doesn't work in championship. Now I know there has to you have to be able to change it up and you have to have different but you, you wouldn't just go open the championship with one puck out or one style of play. Do you know what I mean? You 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 would have that option. Like everything would be practiced and if, if it doesn't work, this is what we do. So you you wouldn't be just set on one thing. But um yeah, no, you I would I'd be slow to change it if it was the way we wanted to play and we had it practiced over and over and over, I'd be very slow to change. Oh very good. Very good. And in relation to um, other hurlers that are coming up, you know, and you're on about trying to string these good performances together. I know in my own case, like, confidence was a huge thing. Like, what was your mindset leading into games that you were able to pull out these performances day in, day out? Do you know, there's the number of bad games you played that I've seen are low. So, like, how did you prepare yourself? Because your work rate and I can speak for this, your work rate is phenomenal, you know what I mean? So, I cannot see how you can go from I can't see how a person can go from joking and laughing in the car to flicking that switch and then get onto the field and put in 60 minutes of hard graft. Because what I notice, especially about the Witcher game, it, it, it takes huge concentration because you're in chasing the puck out and then you have to focus, right, get back out. Then you're at the other side of the field, right, clear the ball, focus, get up and help the forwards. Like So, like, leading into a game, did you have a set routine or did you have tricks that would help you prepare mentally to say, right, there's 60 minutes here I'm going to tear into this. Yeah, no, it's funny. Like, some some days, some days you go and you play and you perform and it's it's like you, everything comes back to your routine and your preparation, how you do it. And he, even to do everything the exact same week and go out and perform and do it the exact same the following week, you could go out and not play well for whatever reason. So it's just really looking at the next game. So the minute that game is played, you look back, what went well, what didn't go well, and then you just write in the next week and try and improve everything you do because I think even to try and do the, this do you have the preparation or try and hit the same level and do the same things at the exact same standard 
it, it often it often drops so you almost have to do everything and try and improve find an extra one or two percent even if it's one or two percent you're improving and then some some like hopefully over time then that consistency in preparation comes out in performance so it is it is really about preparation and you see fellas some years they're brilliant other years they're they're you know they're poor and you know it's it's all about consistency it's just training hard and doing it as often as possible and, and as consistently as possible i suppose yeah that's the key is it the consistency away from the field and preparation like does it all it all adds up i would assume you know does it the hard work you put in off the field and yeah just and to show it on the field it, it's sometimes then you 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 prepare the same way and you're as consistent as possible and for whatever reason it, it just doesn't. doesn't work well like even 2017 probably came off the back of a four to help so sometimes you have to find the motivation as well that that you that gives you that consistency or day in day out you can go to the next level so sometimes a bad year can you know stand you and help you be better than the following year yes it's true it's motivation really isn't it so tell me Life away from the intercounty scene. Now you're retired in 2018. How have you been finding it? Was it because it, it was basically a full time job? And uh, yeah. was, it, was it a shock to the system? Ah, it is. Look, it's I suppose the first year is tough because you're you know you're probably in that routine for the last you know bones of ten years. So you know when the lads are going back training. You know when the league is coming up. You know when the championship is coming up. So it was tough from that point of view. But I suppose with kids, then for me, I just said. My focus just went somewhere else, like it just, um, you know, whatever work or family or, or something else. I, I was still playing away with the club, but I, I went to America then in, in the summer of um, the summer of 2019. So that, uh, so yeah, so that, that, that basically, yes, yeah, tough. The first year out is definitely tough, but then it kind of moves on. I think every year the dress room changes, you know, the management team changes. So then you kind of, you're kind of out of it then, but the first year is probably the toughest. Perfect. Come here, I'll just do a couple of quick fire questions off you there. Who's the yeah. top you've played against some of the best? But have you anyone that sticks out in your head saying, Yeah, he's the toughest yeah. player I played against? Or yeah. best player I played against? Yeah, my um definitely uh, Michael Finley, uh, Kilkenny because he uh, probably the best all round prototype midfielder that you'd want, I suppose. He was definitely, you know, proved it. Captain Kilkenny, I don't know if he even went hurler the year, but he had about all stars, you know, with Bally Hale, yeah. probably all the boxes. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> he strikes me as a good player as well. No, I wouldn't like to be up against him. <laughs> and tell me, if there was a transfer market looking at today's season, who would you buy? Uh, Patrick Horgan, definitely. Yeah, I'd still do. Th- th- he's some cock, sure. Come on, go outside oh, the county. Yeah. Bar Cork, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't feel a play it against. Come on. They're trying to keep them all sweet. <laughs> um, I tell you why I'd, uh, I'd buy Tony Kelly in the morning. I think he's class, to be honest. He, I think he's yeah. an all-rounder. I think he's exceptional now. He is. No, he's brilliant. But TJ Reid as well, I suppose. Oh, yes. Yeah, what a powerhouse. Like, he can just do it all. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what was he like to play against? Um, uh, they were... They were just so good. Like Kilkenny had just so many good fellas. Um, yeah, big, big TJ just big and strong and top class hurler. Uh, could get goals, could run up massive scores. Just everything. Like they're just. I hey, suppose that's. that's can I ask you a good. question? You know, like when you're playing against these players, and they do something special, but you're you're playing against them. Do you be like, "Whoa, that was class," or are you just? Uh, do you know? just you, you kind of see it's more the speed I think more so than anything it's what it's the speed they do the things at the speed they move at yeah. the strength well, I suppose them so if they're catching you know if they're under puck or whatever it's, it's their strength it's their speed and it's just the speed of everything they're striking their touch everything so everything just moves faster yeah that's true like because I, I I did a small small stint on the Limerick uh, on the UL Fitzgibbon team and I played with Tony Kelly and I'll be honest with you, he wasn't even trying. And he, I'd say he must have scored five points in play. Yeah, Whereas I was yeah. in corner forward, breaking my back, trying to even touch the ball. From that day, I was like, right, this man is another level. He's class. So yeah. I've kind of been obsessed with him since, I suppose. Mm. And tell me, if you're willing to something inspirational now. So a 14, 50-year-old player that is looking to get on the inter-county scene but is on the verge, do you know? Can't string a good, can't string a couple of good performances together. What would your advice be to him? Uh, 
has the talent, but just the consistency isn't there. What would your voice be? To a 14-year-old, is that? 14, 15-year-old that has ambitions of playing with Cork. Has yeah, the potential, yeah. but isn't stringing the performances together. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't worry about Cork too much. Like, if, first of all, if a fella enjoys what he's doing, the sport he's playing, being a hurling of football, that's that's the key. Like, if, if a fella really enjoys it, he's going to, and that for girls as well, if they really enjoy what they're doing, they're going to be willing to work harder at it, and they'll want to improve at it, and they'll be happy to take feedback or criticism or anything or any way they can improve they're willing to take that on board so first of all if it's what they enjoy doing that's a great starting point um i wouldn't more i wouldn't worry about the, the car team too much look you can be fortunate enough to be involved with car teams you know I, i'd say timing was a big thing for me and um, but if it doesn't happen that w- if that didn't happen it still wouldn't have taken away from i suppose the enjoyment of playing hurling and football but particularly hurling so it was more the, the enjoyment of what i was doing Perfect, lad. Perfect. That's pretty inspirational. So we'll leave it there, lad. Thanks very much for coming on. I hope you enjoy it. Brilliant. Not about our best looking podcast. No, cheers, yeah. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers, honey. Bye.